Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He got me, but I'm all right. We're just ranching in Lubbock with Mr. Bryce Chapman. Today we're going to learn how to shoe some horses. What you going to teach us today, Bryce? I'm going to teach him how to pull shoes, trim, and after you get, get, get them all nailed on, we're going to show you how to crimp them. Crimp them. Crimp them. Not clinch them. We're, it's a, this is 2020, and we're going to start over. It is no longer called clinching. The word now to all you horseshoes out there in the world is crimping. Spin the nails right, smooth side to the outside, drive them in, and crimp them. That's how you get them shot. Just crimping. Just crimping. You know how to crimp, don't you? Yeah. Grace? Crimp them. That's crimp them. Yeah. We need to put yep. that on a t-shirt. How old are you, Grace? 14. Ashley said it. She said there's not a Chapman that doesn't know how to shoe, shoe horses. horses. Even my oldest brother, Moose, he can shoe horses. All you yeah. got to do is just ask him. He'll help you. So we're going to have Bryce's 14-year-old daughter show me how to crimp them. Yep. Because I'm, I'm telling him, I'm giving him the energy to tell, it, to tell him I'm fixing to pick his foot up. Yes. And then he'll do it. So all you gotta do is just kind of make a gesture like you're gonna pick it up. And you just barely touch him. And I grab their toe, because you see that way you can take it back. See where I'm at? I'm out of the kick zone. He can still kick. So if you slide up and like this, and I always stand just a tick inside, because it, see, how, see how it's like a vice? Yes. It's like roping calves. If you're roping calves in there, you got a kicker, you can put your knees on the top of them and it'll keep their legs down so they can't kick at you. Yes, sir. Same thing, same principle as this. You grab, you grab my box. Put it out right there, you're getting the nails off. Yep. Are you straightening the nails? This would be called uncrimping. Uncrimping? Yeah, you uncrimp them. Direction are you pulling? Down and in. Down and in. Yep, down and in. And the reason why you don't, if you pull it out like this, if it's on, and you got your your pullers here and you pull it out, you'll break the wall off, and it'll be like breaking your fingernail off, and then the horse can get sore, and then you you'll lose your shoes. You use a clinch cutter uh, to uncrimp those nails. Yes, sir. You uh. Uh, when you pull the shoe off, it stays flat. Yes, so, sir. So it's, it's less work going back to your stall jack or your anvil every time. To try to flatten it back out. Right. And you don't have to flatten it back out. And you pick it up to a point where he's floating. See how he's floating? I don't, I don't, I don't even have to hold him. And see? I mean, yes, up, and he can just stand there all day long because he's comfortable. And so if I'm not comfortable, I try to reposition myself. But see, I point my toes in and I push my knees in together. Yes, and sir. I arch my back. And I, and I hold my core because this is hard enough as it is you don't want to make it any more difficult on yourself than, than it already is and the best thing about this being in this position say he does jerk he jerks forward and you're out of the way yes sir see what I mean yes sir so everything that you do when you're shooing a horse it's always about safety because if you're not paying attention and a piece of plastic blows underneath them Yes, sir. And you're not, you know, if it's under a trailer and something blows under there and scares him, he'll, he'll kill you. He'll get on you. Yes, sir. He'll kick you, they'll fall you, they'll bite you. That's why they invented cars. Because <laughs> this was easy. Uh, you know, this was easy, everybody be doing it. It's the wrong word. Can you walk us through what you're doing here? Yeah. I'll just clean the foot out, kind of give us a give us an idea how much we can cut off, and you cut the frogs off, just trim them, just trim them just a little bit. I don't like to trim a whole lot off. I don't like to cut a whole lot of the frogs off. Get the bleeding. <laughs> 
What's that knife called? This is a loop knife. And this is a, uh, it's a hoof knife. Uh, this is just a straight blade hoof knife. And then this one, this one has a, it's, it's a loop. And so you can, you can use it to cut frogs on one side. It's a left-handed and a right-handed knife at the same time. Yes, sir. A lot of people like to pair the soles out with a knife, but I cut them out with a, with a nipper because I don't like to waste time. Are those just the straight nippers as far as like the actual blade? Yeah. These nippers? Yes, sir. Yes, they're just a regular set of GE. GE nippers are flat. I don't know where the logo is on these. What's that other call, kind that called that's not flat? That kind of they're half rounds. Half rounds. And they're set right there. That's a set of half round nippers. You don't use those as much though? I don't use them that much, but you can. You can use them to kind of clean out a little bit of the sole if you want to. Clean out some of the frogs if you want. You use those, they're, they're, and they're curved. See the difference between, between a set of flat nippers and a set of half rounds. Yes, sir. And then, of course, the difference in, in knives is, is this is a right-handed right -handed knife. Hoof and then knife. A hoof knife. And then that's just a regular loop knife. Supposed to take them down to the, see these spider veins like that. You just take them down to the spider veins where there, where there's kind of a waxy, a waxy uh, sole. Yes, sir. And when you do that, that that's that's still allowing you your sole depth to be the right depth that you want. Because if you pair too much sole out with that knife, yes, and their soles get real thin, then you have a sore horse. Yes. And then then you then you. No. You don't have the ability to make money anymore. So you didn't have to rasp on this? Not yet. Not yet. I'm fixing to. Yeah, I bought me a new rasp panel. Did you see my fancy rasp panel? Ooh. Yeah, yeah. it's the blue kind. It's the blue kind. <laughs> yeah, it's the blue kind. Tell me about the direction and why you're going. Well, like I, I like to, when, when you're rasping a, a foot, you, you like to rasp from the heel to the toe, and on this other side from the toe to the heel. And why you do that is it keeps your foot flat so that your distance between the heel and, your, and where your trim is even. And then you want your foot to be flat. So this one, pretty flat. And it, because if you rasp, these, these teeth are, 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 are perpendicular. And so when you when you, when you rest too much right here across the, the in one direction in a perpendicular motion, then you'll you'll dish this foot out. It'll dish out this way. So you start from here and you go to the front, and then you start from the front to the back, and it keeps your foot flat from the front to the back. Yes, sir. And it allows your foot to be flat without dishing it. And see, it's it's, flat. it's a little bit high on this side. take the sole out just a little bit so that you don't get sole pressure some. What's the longest you have before a horse will put his foot down? I bet you got some of the gentle ones like this one, shoot they can stand on they can stand on three feet for a long time. I need to knock that thing in one more time. You wanna knock it in for me? Yeah. Use the flat side of your hammer. And knock it in like this. Just like yeah, that. Yeah. And you, you hold the hold the other side of your shoe. There you go. Now hit it. Okay. Whoa. Oh. Let's get. Let me try. Wow, you did pretty good. That'll work. It doesn't take a whole lot to to bend a shoe. That's why, like a horse, they can they can bend a shoe and they can pull that thing off. Yeah. Like it's nothing, and you try to pull one off, it's like <laughs> it's like a whole other job.
and the, these nails are a special nail and if you look real close the smooth side is to the inside and the, the rough side is always uh, to the inside so the outside is always if you're going around the outside you have to spin your nail if you're on this side your smooth sides to the outside on this side and if you're on this side smooth sides to the outside on this side circle so anyway the the smooth side goes goes on the outside so that because the end of your nail if you look real close is is has a little curve it's a it's a it's a little bit bent to the inside so when you drive that nail it, it automatically will pull itself out when you're driving it in it'll push itself to the outside so you put the smooth side to the outside start it and it comes out gotcha. ring it off so that so the rough sides to the inside smooth side to the outside start your nail one two three bring your nail off put your magnet in there, your hammer and help you pick them up and then see you can get them like this and you can put them in there like this and you can nail them like this if you want to and I bend them over when I do that but you can sometimes that's faster especially on a gentle horse you can two nails at the same time come on with it that's how you get out from underneath them faster this tool right here that is a clinch block what it does is it when you put that when you put that nail in that hole in that fullering and you and you hit it it'll set it so it keeps it kind of stiff well then when they're bent out you want them to set them set all of them kind of even so you use that block when that nail's bent over to set it and then it it'll it'll kick your nail out just a little bit for your to, when you crimp them when you crimp them so these are ready to crimp. Ready to crimp. And they're straight. Put straight in front of them and this kick this leg stays straight back. Yes, sir. Because if you turn it this way, they pull, they'll tip it over. Yes, sir. And always step on your stand on your on your leg. Yes, sir. So whenever you pick it up, pick him up, put him forward, and kind of get him where he's comfortable. And just bite him off. Bite him off close. Yes, sir. Close as you can. And then you crimp them. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and you just rasp under them just a little bit. Okay. And see how this horse has got a pretty good foot, so your your shoe, your shoe's pretty much your shoe's pretty much uh, your shoe's pretty much flush to the foot on this one. Yes, sir. And I try not to dress them up too much, but then you hold your clincher straight out and crimp them. Crimp them. Crimp them. Hold them up. Squeeze. Hey, Grace. Will you go in the house? And, I, and, and there's fly sprays in there on the... Oh, I thought so. Okay. I bought a brand new deal of fly, fly spray. Well, all that way they wouldn't be moving around so much on it. But then you just, that's how you do it. Make sure you keep your, keep your feet on the stands, legs, and just cramp them. Cramp them. <clears throat> and then you just use the smooth side of your rasp and you just rasp them off just a little bit with a smooth. You don't have to knock them off a whole lot. Yeah, and you don't have to hit them a whole lot. And a lot of times, you know, you can turn your turn your rasp, use your rough side of your rasp like that, and then use the smooth side. You quit moving so much.
compressed so and it stretches it out and elongates it so so it's like a piece of wire you know how you can get a piece of baling wire and, and heat it up and then it breaks and break it like that. okay that's what you want to happen on a shoe when you when you bend that nail over and it's bent like that you want it to have a point but you also want it to be strong enough to hold it yes sir. and thin enough to where if he pulls that shoe it breaks it like a piece of wire and then the, the then the nail will come out smooth yes sir. On, on the end so it doesn't break his hoof fall off and then if the person's riding it it doesn't make that horse fall it's kind of a safety thing yes sir. and and it takes a lot of time to perfect how thin you want those nails some people i mean you can actually probably not even crimp them you yes, just sir. rasp them off but it's kind of a it's kind of an extra uh, way to hold a, hold the shoes on really yes sir I mean my trick horses only have two nails in each side instead of six and some people believe you put a, a nail in every hole of the shoe you know sometimes there's eight sometimes there's 14 nail holes and some people think you have to put a nail in every one of them but you don't have to yes sir. Uh, even my trick horses would lay down and rear up I'd always put two two nails and they stop I roped on rope rope calves and rope big steers on them Two nails will hold them in, but most people, you know, really like about three. Six. Yeah, three on each side. Mm -hmm. and, and these horses are gentle, so I'm used to them. And, and this is kind of probably not etiquette to do it like this. And I pick their feet up like that. But most of the time, you pick them up like this, grab them by the bottom, and then and then come around and put them on your stand. Yeah, that's sure. how that's how you're supposed to do it. But I don't I don't always do that because like these horses that I shoe a lot. They trust me, and as you notice, they don't. They don't really do a they whole lot. They don't take of, kindly to me. They don't. <laughs> your, your cologne smells bad. Where's your deodorant? I'm not sure. And what's that called when you? That is hemming. Hemming. Yeah, you hem it, and you, you just it just puts a little bit of a, a groove in between the shoe and the hoof, keeps it clean, and then also next time you go to pull the shoes off. Uh, then you can get your, your pullers in there easier. Yes, sir. And then I hem them back to the back. Yes, sir. Put your rest at a 45 between the shoe and the foot. Yes, sir. And just go slow like that, and then it'll hem, hem that foot all the way around there. What's that, what's that do? It just keeps them cleaned up. It makes them look real, real crisp, and it also, next time you go to pull the shoe off. Yes, sir. And you use your pullers. These are the pullers on them. All the ones that you should, should use are these pullers, and they have the round ended, round knobs on it. Yes, sir. See, and they're 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 the mustad ones. Yes, sir. And then I've got another set in here. I'm gonna let you use the other set because if you don't, these are the handles are close together, and you'll paint your fingers. Yes, sir. There's another set of them in that on that side on that left side. Yeah, those. I think it only took you like. 45 minutes. Three minutes to get that shoe on. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't take that long. Especially, especially if you got good horses. Get you a bronc, it takes you a while. Yeah. And I always do the front, the fronts first. And usually what I do is I, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll nail them all the way around, all four shoes. Yeah. And then, and then you, then you can crimp them. Yes. Okay. And then you crimp them. Crimp them. That's the fun part. That's the fun part. Because you're done after that. But it's cramp, not clench. It's that is correct. We're working on changing that. Yeah. Yeah, he his uncle used horses out here. And his dad used to work for Charlie Thompson, the rodeo company. And they kept their bucking horses and some of their bulls out here. And so his uncle was my banker, and uh, and I, I saw a for sale sign on this place. I was just telling this story just a second ago, and uh, and I called his uncle. I said, "Who owns that place?" He goes, "Well, I, I keep cow. I got some cows out there," and and I said, "Really?" He goes, "Yeah, they're for, they're selling it." And so he gave me the guy's number. And I called him, and he met me out here that day. And I went to shoeing horses pretty quick right after that. <laughs> Not one thing. Though.
Crimple. Yes. Crimple. <laughs> <laughs> oh, love it. Like uh, that right there, you look good. Yeah, kick it out. Let's see. Kick it out just a little bit that way and kind of keep it underneath them just a little bit more. Yes. Because their foot needs to be in front of them and just out just a little bit so you can have some room in there. Yes, sir. Goes in front. Goes on. Just like that. Oh, yes, sir. And this, this actually goes right there. And that one goes right there. There you go. Turn around, face forward. There you go. Put your foot on the stand. There you go. So you didn't. There you go. Perfect. Turn that just a little bit. There you go. Now try. There you go. Yes, that makes it makes it easier. Yeah. Burning. Yeah. Use both hands. There you go. You got this down, I think. You're getting it pretty smooth. Yes. And after we get through, I hope I hope she goes and wins the world champion breakaway for twenty-five thousand. <laughs> smooth side. Just, just underneath the nail. Underneath the nail. Right. Right here. Just use it. You see how it's got that hook, that rough hook underneath there. You can almost just do Oh, it. yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's, that's okay, all that's what to, you're that, trying to do. That's all you're trying to knock off. Yes, that. sir. Okay. And you can use one hand if you want to. And then just, just barely rasp under nails so there's not a groove. Yes, sir. Like so I said, you don't make you a cowboy track. You make you make a... Make a track, make cowboy. Tracks, cowboy. Make tracks, cowboy. Make tracks, cowboy, not cowboy track. That's, that, that's ranching right there. He's down there on the bottom of his foot and grab it. There you go. And just rasp on the inside. Keep your keep your rasp flat up against the foot. Flat up against the foot. Oh, flat. There you go. Like that. And start with the front. Start with the front and just a barely. You hit, feel, it, feel it when you hit that yes, nail. Sir. Now like crimp that. them. Now crimp them. Right. You gotta stay on your stand. Yes, sir. On your stand. It's all right. Anybody that even just tries this has a, has a lot of respect from me. Use both hands. Like this right here? There you go. Keep them straight out, straight out on you. There you go. Now, there you go. Cramp it. There you go. Hold them down just a little. Like that? Yep. You hear it? Yes, sir. Do that again. All right, now go to the other side. Hold your clinchers down. There you go. Hold your clinchers down. There you go. Squeeze it tighter than that. See how it's sticking out just a little bit? Yes, Open sir. them up a little bit and hold your clinchers down and crimp it. There you go. They're called clinchers, but the, it's called crimping. Right. Yeah. That's what we, we're, we're, we're renaming it in 2020. And now uh, get it out crimping. from underneath them? And rasp them just a little bit. Smooth side? Yep, smooth side. And you turn your rasp. There you go. You got it right right there. And then flip your rasp the other way when you... There you go. Perfect. Smooth transition. Feel pretty good? Uh -huh. not, not real good. Make sure they're smooth. I don't know, sir. I don't know. And if you feel it, uh, I, I, I shoe a horse. I go from one front foot to the other front foot so that they're even. And it, in your mind, you're sculpting that foot and to, to make it to make them look the same so if you do front to back and then you go maybe back to front then then you don't remember your angles the way you trim that other foot so a lot of times horses will be off one will be a little flatter than the other one and one will be more steep and so that's why i do front to front so my hoof my hoof uh, confirmation is the same on the fronts and then i go to the back yes. and the only other reason i do that is i only have to move my tools three times Yes, See, sir. if you go from front to back, and then you go from front to back on the other side, you move your tools four times. Yes, sir. And this is hard enough as it is, like I was telling you earlier, the best way to get to, to, for longevity of shoeing horses is get out from underneath them. 
Yes, sir. Stay out from underneath them. Get out from underneath them as fast as you can, and then you can go to your next one. Yes, like sir. Dale does. Go to the next one. Oh, where is my 